Namaste. Now let's take a look at the fourth verse. The fourth verse is very interesting. It starts off, Vashishta Kumbho Bhava Gotamarya Munindra Devarchita Shekaraya. So here he's talking about the great sages, Vashishta and Kumbho Bhava. What does that mean? Well, Kumbha is a jar, and abode means to live in, and bhava means to become or to be born. So this describes sage Agastya, and Agastya was a brother of Vishishta, and one of the seven great sages as well. So uh, these two brothers, even though they're a little bit strange in their family history, <laughs> <laughs> were uh, very influential are the uh, rishis of several great Vedic mantras and so on, you know, author of many works and whatever. And, of course, Gotama, Gotama Arya. Gotama was an Aryan, okay? Not the, the Nietzschean or, uh, you know, uh, Hitlerian Aryan, phony Aryan, but a real Aryan. What Aryan means is one whose only interest is self-realization. It's a very ancient word, and it comes down to us from prehistory, from even before the Vedic civilization, like 15, 20,000 years ago. It's really an amazing word and an amazing concept because it refers to those who don't claim any planet as home. That's really what it means. That uh, they are space-born or heaven-born or even born in the pure creation and they come down, avatar, they come down and take a body on this planet. So they're like envoys. They're like ambassadors from the spiritual world, uh, not like an ordinary human. But they know who they are, they know where they came from, and they know that they're going back. <laughs> and so they are never attached to ordinary earthly affairs. That's the real Aryan. And then there's Munindra, means by the kings of sages. So not only these three sages, but all the Aryan sages, all the great sages, all those who come from above to guide us, inspire us, lead us to liberation. Uh, they all worship Shiva, Devarchita. Devarchita means even the gods worship him. So one of Shiva's names is Deva Deva. He's the god of the gods. Well, when the gods get in trouble, who do they go to? Shiva. Who are you going to call, all right? <laughs> Sometimes even Brahma and Vishnu can't help them. So they have to go to Shiva and uh, very delicately wake him up out of his meditative trance. <laughs> he does not like to be disturbed. Anyway, <laughs> watch that third eye. Sekar, unto him who is the topmost crown of the universe, the Sekar is like the crown, the ornamented, gilded, valuable crown on the head of a great ruler. And of course, Shiva is the greatest ruler. I mean, he rules everything. Ishwar, he is the controller. He knows everything. He created everything, and in some sense, he is everything. So he's the one who the gods worship. Chandraka. Chandra is moon. Arka is sun. So moon and sun. Oh, by the way, the moon is considered a more important planet than the sun in Vedic astrology. The moon represents the mind, the manomaya kosha, whereas the sun simply re represents the ego, <laughs> the uh, ankar, uh, the, uh, the inside, inner organ. So, uh, sun, of course, Western astrology is based on sun. It's called solar astrology for that reason, or sun sign astrology. 
and it's basically useless. I mean, it might have a little bit of relevance, but you'd have to twist it and turn it and add all kinds of gimmicks to make it work at all. Whereas uh, Jyotish, Vedic astrology, works right out of the box. Very simple, straightforward, and plain, easy, logical, and all that. So uh, it's also more accurate because the Western system is 23 degrees and a half uh, out of sync with the actual stars in the sky. That's another video. We'll talk about that sometime. Uh, so Chandraka, Vaishvanara. Vaishvanara means all-pervading. He's everywhere like fire. How is that? Well, for one thing, the light of the sun is fire, and this light of the sun is everywhere. But even more than that, Buddha compared the material world to a fire. He says the world is burning. Consciousness is burning. The senses are burning. The body is burning. The mind is burning. Everything is burning in this world, which means it's subject to entropy. Entropy means the uh, slowly uh, increasing disorder in any system. So we see that people are born, they grow up, they run around and do a bunch of stuff, then they get old and gradually dwindle and finally disappear. Everything in the material world is like that. So, you know, we shouldn't be attached to it. <laughs> That's the thing. So he is Vaishvanara. He's all-pervading, not only by means of the sun and moon, which are his great eyes, but by fire. Vaishvanara. Vanara means fire. So he's everywhere in the form of entropy, of time, aging, and dissolution. Lokchanaya, unto him whose eyes... His eyes are the sun, moon, and fire. So he sees everything. Tasmai, therefore, va karaya namashivaya. Va is the fourth syllable in the mantra. Na, ma, shi, va. And so also this verse begins with the letter va, vashishto. So, beautiful Sanskrit poetry, and perfectly expresses Shankaracharya's mood of devotion and love toward Shiva. Aum Namah Shivaya.